Hello, everybody. How, how are we? Good. Surely. I can just smell those lilies. Or powerful. <laughs> oh, I, I want to tell some stories about Shirley, but I'm going to control myself. I, she, you have to watch out because she has a strong right. I'll just say that. Let's pray. Thank you, Father. Lord, we're here. We are here. You are here. So let's do it, Lord. May you have your way in this place. Thank you. Hallelujah. You know, hallelujah means praise Yahweh. Praise the Lord. And we praise you today, Lord. We pray that you would <clears throat> lift us up above our circumstances. May we be able to see. Thank you, Lord. With you, we walk into the unknown for us, but it's the known for you. We um, walk by faith, not by our feelings. Amen? Amen? We walk by our faith, not by our feelings. We walk by the Spirit, not by our soul. And our emotions can do things to us, um, get us off track. But Lord, today we pray you help us to, to get control of these emotions. Thank you, your, the fruit of your spirit is self-control. And so we, we say um, feelings, emotions, submit to God today. And Lord, we trust you that you're going to speak today. Amen. All right. We're still, this is the last week that I'm going to be speaking with you about 1 Timothy. And, uh, and so I, I just, I don't know if I found this picture online and I didn't, know if, the, if you could relate to this. Have you ever felt like this? <laughs> Just stuck. Like, get me out of here. The truth is, I think we all have felt like that before in our own ways. We all have our own little traps that we get ourselves in. Because uh, life is not easy. Amen. Amen. If you didn't know that, you can take that home with you today. <laughs> it's an uphill battle if you want to make progress. You don't make progress by accident. You got to keep going. And it doesn't just happen. Because, you know... Even with God, we have mountains we have to climb. We got problems we've got to face. Circumstances to deal with. Complexities that are beyond us. And uh, that's just the reality of life. And how many of you would like to be successful? I would like to be successful. What's really helped me one time in thinking about success is, is that, I don't know, I don't even know where I got it now at this stage, but somebody said the reward of success is often confused with success. So very often we think of success as being the Olympic gold medal, right? They're successful because they got, they're on the stand and they're getting the medal. The, that gold medal and standing on that podium is only the reward of success. Success is day by day making progress on the journey. So, for instance, I was successful, successful my wife told me, 
maybe a month ago she told me, Noel, you, why you put your socks inside out into the laundry basket? I don't like that because every time I have to take them out, sorry to embarrass you, but you know what I did? I started putting them right side out. And she told me, she's like, no, know what I realized? This week, I found your socks and they're not inside out. Thank you. <laughs> that is success. You want to be, <laughs> you want to have a successful marriage. Get your socks and put them the right way. Right? You want to, you know, we want to have our kids. We want to have a good relationship with our, with our kids when they get older. So you know what success is? It's me putting my phone in my pocket so I can spend a little time of, with my kids, right? Uh, just, there's just so many ways that we can be successful. We, you know, with our words, we want to be successful communicator. We want to be a good communicator. So we're successful when we hold our tongue when we need to hold our tongue. And we're successful when we let go our tongue when we need to let go of our tongue to build up, let it go to build up and hold it back when you're tearing down somebody. So that's successful. I love this quote from a famous American named Booker T. Washington. He was, a, he was born a slave in the United States. And about seven years old, Abraham Lincoln gave the Emancipation Proclamation and he was set free, his family moved. He ended up becoming an educator, president of a university, and a counselor to presidents but in the 1800s. And this is what he says about success. He says, success is to be measured not so much by the position that one has reached in life as by the obstacles which he has overcome. So God cares about the destination out there that, you know, that maybe you have a picture in your mind of where you want to get to. But I think that he cares more about the journey that each of us are on in getting there. He does care about the destination, but I believe he cares more about the day-by-day -day process. Because he, do you know why? Because it's in that process that we get to know him. So he says overcome. You know, you know the Bible says we're overcomers. S say, I'm an overcomer. I'm an overcomer. We overcome as believers in Christ, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, the Bible says. We overcome because Jesus has overcome for us. It's like, you know, having Michael Jordan on your secondary school basketball team. You're going to win because he's on your team. You're an overcomer. You're an overcomer because Jesus has overcome. But there's also the reality that for you to be an overcomer, you have things you've got to overcome. You do. You're an overcomer too. And Jesus is with you. But for you to be an overcomer, you've got to have things to overcome. So Jesus was interesting in, in so many different ways. But what I find interesting about Jesus is the, the progress and the journey that he was on, just like us. And he had a very clear understanding of the barriers that he faced and the limitations that he had to go through. He had barriers of um, imperfect friends. He had barriers of his physical limitations. He had barriers of temptations, barriers of murderous enemies, barriers of pain, sorrow, grief, all these things. He had to navigate on his journey, just like you and me. Anybody have some challenges this week? You can raise your hand if you had some challenges this week. Yeah. Hey, we're with you. God's with you. God knows. What I want to talk with you today about is four barriers to progress. And we want to be successful. We want to make progress. 
and I hope that this is going to encourage us on our journeys, all right? So the, the, first, <clears throat> the first one, this is, these are taken from um, 1 Timothy chapter 4, starting at verse 12. And uh, the first barrier is here in these verse, this verse. Paul, Paul, the experienced older man, speaks to his spiritual younger man son, son Timothy, spiritual son, Timothy. And this is what he says. Let no one despise you for your youth, but set the believers an example in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Let no one despise you for your youth. And this, I find this, this little sentence so interesting. L look at this. He's, you know, he's speaking to Timothy, who's actually now becoming a young leader. giving him some fatherly advice from a man who's been there before. He says, Timothy, let no one despise you for your youth. Okay, what's interesting to me is this. In 1 Timothy and throughout Paul's writing, because he wrote something like 14 books of the New Testament, Paul loves the church. In 1 Timothy, he says, this is the, what, what is the church? The church is the church of the living God. It's the bride of Christ. The church is amazing. It's the pillar and foundation of truth. Timothy, you're going to be a leader in the church. But look at this. Timothy is going to be a leader in the church. And this, I find this so interesting. Paul says, Timothy, as you're leading in the church, let no one despise you. So what's he saying there? That in the church, there might be some people that are going to despise you. What? Come on, the church is perfect, right? Aren't we all perfect here today? <laughs> Don't we never get it wrong? Doesn't everybody love each other all the time? How could that be? Paul is speaking an honest truth that sometimes it's difficult outside the church or inside the church. You know why? There's people. And we're all in process. So he says to Timothy, don't let anybody despise you for your youth. And um, I just find that so... I remember, I remember when, I, when I was praying about being the pastor of the church, I went and spoke with people who had been pastors for decades to say, what am I getting myself into? And very often people would say, well, it's really good that your wife was the daughter of a pastor because she knows what goes on sometimes. And this is not a judgment against you guys, but sometimes, <laughs> not here, not in Life Church. Really, I am so blessed. Let me be honest with you. I'm so blessed in Life Church. But sometimes it's tough for pastors. And, and it's tough for all of us, right? But so, so they gave me lots of good advice about, you know, raising your kids as a pastor and, and the financial challenges of being a pastor and the friendship challenges of being a pastor and some of those things. And so... When we, when we want to make progress, when we want to step into something that's new, it's so awesome when you can get some wise counsel of people that have been there before. You know what I'm saying? Because then they can help you to walk into that with your wa eyes wide open to the challenges that, that are there. So he says to Timothy, let no one despise you for your youth. Despise is like they're disgusted by you. Who do you think you are, Timothy? Who do you think you are to speak into my life? Despise, uh, it's very strong. And so the way that I look at that is because I'm asking this question, what's the barrier here? What do you think the barrier here in this context is? I want you to think about that. What is the barrier that Paul is speaking to Timothy about in his context. The age, maybe, okay. The, the, the first thing that I would look at in this is the discouragers. Oh, there's those people. 
that those people are trying to stop me from getting to where I need to be. Those discouragers. You're, dis, you're just useless. Who do you think you are? It's trying to speak to us. Don't let anybody despise you. Okay, so maybe it's the discouragers, right? Anybody ever had a discourager and they felt like a barrier? Yes. I, this is maybe technical, but I get too caught in details. Discourager, you know that ER at the last part? ER, when you ever see that in the English language, the ER means it, it's an occupation. So you have a, you have a, a butcher, farmer, that's their occupation. Discourage-er. That's their job. So the discourager is my barrier because that's their job. And then, then the ED, I know this is maybe nerdy. I, ED at the end of the, at, at the end of it, uh, English language word. That means that, um, I mean, I wrote it down. It's an outcome of an action. So I'm discouraged because of them. What the action that was done to me, I'm discouraged. I am a victim of the discourager. They're my problem because it's their job and I am taking that. But now I want to tell you about the one that I like better. It's an OUS. <laughs> OUS stands for when you are full or possessing something, something belongs to you. For example, I am courageous. I possess courage. When I possess that, it doesn't matter what the discourager is trying to do to me, because I'm not discouraged, I'm not a victim, because I possess courage. There you go. That's a good one. Okay, so here's my sentence for you. I, I think it's my own sentence, and I think it's really good. I don't think, you know, sometimes you, you, you say something, but you think you got it from somebody else. I think this is Knowles. <laughs> so, and I think, for me, it's really good. Just because you're at the butcher doesn't mean you need to be a steak. So Paul says, let no one despise you for your youth. But look it, look it. He doesn't say, you know, correct them. Correct that discourager. Tell them they shouldn't be doing that job. He says, set an example. Do you see? It's not the problem out there. The barrier isn't them. The barrier is not them. So that's what I put. The barrier is not them. So then who is it? It could be me. So then let's not let it be us. Set the example. R move from being a victim to being a leader. You got discouragers coming at you? Lead. Set an example. Move. You're not a victim. You you hold something greater. You possess something greater. Hallelujah. I love the story of Joseph. He's, his journey is so amazing. You remember Joseph? He had this dream. That's basically how it starts. He has this dream about all these hay bales bowing down to him. And he tells his brothers about it. And then he tells his father. And he, Immediately, he has discouragers come up. As soon as you have a vision, even from God of what could be and what should be, very often discouragement comes at you. And, um, and so you could think that those discouragers are the barriers, but we have to move through that because God 
wants us to move through that. I'm going to look at Joseph in connection with these four things a little bit more. So the second barrier is in verse 13. He says to Timothy, until I come, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation and to teaching. I just, I love this clarity that Paul gives Timothy. Until I come, Timothy, this is exactly what I want you to do. Everybody gets somewhere, and some people get there on purpose. So, this one's pretty simple. Se seasonal confusion. Do you know in this season what you're supposed to be doing? In the season, season that you're in right now, do you have clarity? Or are you just like kind of pushed by your circumstances? There's some things we can't control, but there's some things that we can. And so Paul speaks into Tim Timothy's life some seasonal clarity. And uh, so I, you know, maybe you would just take this and go to the Lord with your little notebook and say, Lord, the next three months, you know, until, or until September when the school year starts, what am I supposed to be doing? And it wouldn't hurt to have two or three things that you could write down. And you may already be doing, but doing it, but it's amazing when you write it down, the clarity that that brings to you. So, so if a barrier to moving and progressing on our journey is seasonal confusion. Um, Joseph, I think he had it. You see the different seasons that Joseph went in. He was, you know, he was in the pit, then he was in the Potiphar's house, and he made the most of that season. Then he found himself in prison, and he made the most of that season. And then he found himself in the palace, and he made the most of that season. And so the season and the circumstance that you find yourself in is not a measure of God's blessing in your life. Good. Hallelujah. Okay, I'm going to keep going. Number three, do not neglect the gift you have, which was given you by prophecy when the council of elders laid their hands on you. Ah, this is, this is an interesting one. Okay, this is the third barrier, neglecting the gift. Another way I was going to put this is forgetting the supernatural. Any of you ever forget about the supernatural? He, he's saying, Timothy, don't forget that charisma that you received. Remember when they laid their hands on you and prayed for you? There was something happened in that moment. Something from God was deposited into your life. But you got to use that thing in order for it to develop. Um, I think very often we think that, like we understand that in the natural, you've got to manage and steward natural things. Do you know? Do you know what I'm saying? Um, if you want to see your money get bigger, then it may be good to do something with that money, invest it in something that's going to grow, right? Does that make sense? Do you know that the same principle there works in spiritual things? Did you know that? I don't think we often know that. I think we forget it. 
I think very often we just think, well, if God wants to do it, then he'll do it. I think we think that God is going to give us this big, massive tree. But do you know what he gives us? A seed. And he expects us to take that thing that we've received and see it grow. And did you know that you could have a ton of seed but never have fruit? Paul says to Timothy, don't neglect the gift that you've been given. I got a three, four, six, and eight, eight-year-old? Is she eight now? Eight. I got four kids. And uh, we've been bringing them to hurling the last few months. And a couple weeks ago, I was talking with a grandma of one of the kids, and we were watching them practicing. Like, we were both saying, wow, it's amazing. Look at these kids looking at my four-year-old. And he's out there running around with the hurl, just slamming things and, like, you know, knowing exactly what to do, running into people and trying to get the ball in the goal. But before, when they first got there, they had no idea what they're supposed to do, right? But you know how they developed? They just participated. They just went out on the field and hit the ball and listened to the coach. And participation is an ama amazing thing. <laughs> De Denzel Washington says that what you practice, you get good at. <laughs> Does it matter that he says it? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what you practice, you're going to get good at. And so Jesus calls us to take these things that he's given us and use them. I have one son that he would sit in the car with his helmet on and his hurl, and he never got out on the field. And so his brothers and sister were much better than him. You could have a massive bag of seed and never have fruit. You could take one seed and have a lot, a lot, a lot of fruit if you take it and do what you're supposed to, to do with it. So the Spirit, this is what um, Peter prophesied, or he was actually speaking about a prophecy of Joel in Acts chapter 2. And he says that in the last days, which he was saying is starting now, in the last days, God says, I will pour out my Spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions. Old men will dream dreams on my servants, men and women. I will pour out my spirit. That is amazing. That God could, could deposit something in you that is supernatural. But you've got to use it. You got to use that gift to be a blessing to others. This is what Joseph did. You just see him on his journey, and you know, he inter I wonder if Joseph knew the full interpretation of his dream early on. I wonder if that's what helped him go through the pit, the prison, the Potiphar's house, and all the situations was because he actually understood what was coming out there. I wonder if he could interpret his own dream because he could interpret everybody else's. He went to the prison and the, the, the wine taster guy and the baker, he interpreted their dreams for them. And then Pharaoh has this crazy dream and Joseph knew exactly seven years, what's going to happen, this is what you should do exactly. I, I wonder if Joseph understood where he was going and that allowed him to navigate the difficulties that faced him. Do you understand where you're going in order that you can face the difficulties that you're going to have to face? And what's amazing is that Pharaoh um, said an amazing thing about Joseph after he interpreted his dream. He says, can we find a man like this in whom is the Spirit of God? 
And then he appointed him to be overseer of all the agriculture and all the food of the nation and what was going on there. So I just, I just want to remind us of the supernatural. Like we, we're a church, we're a church of supernatural stuff. Are you with me? We are a church. At least I'm going to be. I don't know about you, but I'm hungry for more than just what I see. I need, I need more, and I know there is, there's more, right? Beyond my circumstances and challenges, and there's a God who's in control. He's bigger. The world, you know, just wants me to look at what I see here, but they just don't see. I don't say that with pride. I just, I'm saying there's more. There's a great God. Okay, so... Um, The last one, he says to Timothy, practice these things, immerse yourself in them so that all may see your progress. Immerse yourself. Um, just go for it. Toe, toe dipping, it's not good enough. <laughs> Timothy, you gotta just go for it. You gotta jump in with what God has for you. All right, let's, let's stand up. I think, I think I'm done. You, you remember Joseph at the very end he arrived at the destination that he saw. He began to see the reward of success. Do you remember? And his brothers were afraid that he was going to kill him. And he says to them, you guys meant it for evil, but God has meant this for good, for the saving of many. These were the guys that were going to kill him. They ended up selling him so they could have some cash in their pocket as a slave. And, you know, I think that there's some of us, some of you here, that you have some brothers like that, not literal brothers. You have people in your life that are like that, and uh, that's tough. But you know what? God's with you. God's with you, and you know what may happen? that if you can navigate the way Joseph navigate, you may end up saving them. So, grab hold of that courage. Possess it. It belongs to you. It's yours. You're not a victim to discouragers. You are bigger than that. God is bigger than that. You don't need to be bitter because God is bigger. You don't need to be bitter because God is bigger. That's what we see with Joseph. And so, Father, thank you today, Lord, that we're a people that are going to be making progress. And God, we're going to be successful today. Success is today. Your success is today. So, Lord, we thank you that in your strength we will be successful we thank you that you give us what we need. We thank you, Holy Spirit. And you know, it's an amazing thing the Bible says in the New Testament over and over. It, anybody who, you want a good gift, ask God for the Holy Spirit. And so today, will we just do that? Lord, I just ask for your Holy Spirit. More of you in my life. I don't fully know what that looks like, God, but, but I get a little bit of a picture of that supernatural power that can work. And so, Lord, I pray that you would give me what I need, that you would give me more of your Holy Spirit. And I thank you that you promise to give good gifts to your kids. Lord, we bless your holy name. And we just thank you, Lord. We thank you that you are a good God. Thank you, Lord. Yannick, would you come up just for a minute? And we'll just, we just want to... Lift the praise to the Lord together. Is that okay just to finish this off? 
with faith because we're not a people that are moved by our feelings, but we're people of faith. All right? So we're going we're gonna to give some feeling from our faith. Is that okay? All right, Yannick, can we do, um, what are we going to do over here? Hallelujah. We pray. I'm kind of funny, aren't I? We're, I'm lifting my hands here. Let's lift our hands. We don't make me look funny. If we all do it, we won't look so funny. Thank you, Lord. Can you say thank you, Lord? Thank you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are a good God. Thank you, Lord. We're coming to you today, Lord. We're thanking you that you are in control. You are greater than our circumstances, Lord. We thank you, God, that you are in control. We thank you, Lord, that we have everything we need in you. We thank you, Lord, that you didn't give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. We thank you, Lord, that you work all things together for good to those who love you and have been called according to your purpose. We bless you, Lord, today in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.